The Erie County District Attorney revealing today new evidence in the Patrick Kane rape investigation. Frank Sedita says this surveillance video proves that evidence collected in this high profile case is safe, secure, and undisturbed. Sedita released this key piece of evidence at a news conference this morning that you watched live here on 7 ABC. He says it proves that allegations of tampering with the actual evidence in this case are not true. Well, this is what we know tonight. The district attorney says the accuser's mother, who found the bag in question, was involved in a, quote, elaborate hoax. Even so, she is unlikely to face charges. The case against Kane is still open tonight. Kane's attorney says no settlement talks have taken place. We have live team coverage examining every angle of this. 7 Eyewitness News reporter Hannah Bueller has reaction from Kane's legal team. But first, let's head to Jill Perkins. She is breaking down today's developments with the DA. Jill. Good evening, Joanna. The DA says once it was determined that this bag in question was just part of an elaborate hoax, it's now not a question of when the rape investigation could go to a grand jury, but if it will at all. It's a bizarre hoax and it's a dog and pony show. The mother of Patrick Kane's accuser now accused of duping her daughter's attorney. Erie County District Attorney Frank Sedita going public today claiming the woman told an elaborate lie about the discovery of this brown paper bag. Claiming she found that brown paper bag in her doorstep. That's false. According to Sedita, the mother managed to convince attorney Tom Iowanu the bag once contained her daughter's rape kit and that evidence was tampered with. Today, the DA working to set the record straight. This is a rape kit. It is a box. As you can plainly see, it is not a bag. Sedita outlining exactly what he says happened following the alleged rape on August 2nd. He says the ECMC rape kit was opened at 9.30 a.m. and sealed by the nurse at 11.39 a.m. It was then turned over to Hamburg police. The DA showing the actual rape kit box and sharing this video. Sedita says it shows investigators bringing the rape kit to Central Police Service's evidence lockers at 12.06 p.m. Nowhere in that video, Sedita says, do you see a bag? Bag. So where did it come from? Clayton went to her mother's home and changed her top before she went to ECMC to be examined. Once there, Sedita says a nurse asked the accuser's mother to place her daughter's top in that hospital bag to later be collected by police. But when police arrived, they used a different bag. The civilian is the last known person to have had the brown paper bag that was given to her on the morning of August the 2nd, 2015. The civilian is the complainant's mother. Now Sedita is left to determine, did the accuser herself know of this apparent ruse? Obviously, there has been an effort to create a hoax. Obviously, there's been an effort to uh, manufacture a perception uh, that uh, forensic evidence cannot be trusted. Uh, I got to figure out who was in on that, why they would do that, and what it means vis-a-vis -vis all the other evidence. And in the next coming days, that's exactly what Sedita will be doing, trying to find out if the accuser knew what her mother was apparently up to. And coming up, all new at 6, can this mother face charges? I'll let you know in another live report. For now, reporting live in downtown Buffalo, Joe Perkins, 7 Eyewitness News. The accuser's family not talking publicly tonight, but they did release this statement to the Associated Press. It says, quote, while we are disappointed that Mr. Iwanu withdrew from this, this case, providing advice and counsel in the criminal investigation of Patrick Kane, we have every intention of pursuing this case to a just conclusion. Now, on the other side of this case, what is Patrick Kane's attorney saying about what's now being called a dog and pony show, a circus? 7 Eyewitness News reporter Hannah Bueller here now with more. Well, Keith, to put it bluntly, Cambria says there's just no room in our legal system for an elaborate hoax like this. And he says what's most concerning is the fact that the accuser knew that this bag existed, but simply didn't come forward. Now, Cambria says he had no doubt evidence was properly taken care of in this case and authorities tested and collected it properly. He says obviously someone was not happy with DNA results released a few weeks ago, which according to Cambria, none of Kane's DNA was was found below the waist on this accuser. After hearing what DA Sedita had to say, Cambria says it's clear Kane's accuser knew of the bag, what the bag contained, and made no effort to come forward to stop this circus. Uh, to me, 
that starts to sew together all the elements necessary to demonstrate at minimum obstruction of governmental administration. I mean, why else would you do this if you weren't trying to undermine something you weren't happy with? There are two critical things that he said, maybe three. Uh, one is that the accuser here um, knew of the bag, that the bag contained an item of her clothing and that she apparently had accompanied her mother, uh, so she knew what was in this bag. Now, Cambria reiterates no settlement talks have taken place between Patrick Kane and his accuser. And while Cambria says he would have never done what Iwanu did a few days ago, he does believe Tommy Iwanu was duped by his client. Cambria has not spoken with Patrick Kane since all of these new allegations came forward. But coming up, all new on 7 Eyewitness News at 6, can Paul Cambria take action against the accuser's mother? I'm looking into that in the next hour, and I'll bring you that. Coming up at 6. We're live in downtown Buffalo. Hannah Bueller, 7 Eyewitness News. All right, thanks, Hannah. Also weighing in on all of this today, Patrick Kane's agent. He issued a statement today saying, quote, As I firmly said all along, I do not believe that Patrick Kane did anything wrong. It's clearly a step in the right direction. 